Hi, this Hi, this is Stan Lau with Master Math. During today's lesson, you're going to come across some You Try It pages. When you get there, hit your pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, last lesson we talked about proportions, and I hope you understand basically what a proportion is. Today, we're going to talk about writing and solving proportions. This is a very useful skill that you'll use all the time. And you remember that proportionality means that something changes size evenly or fairly is another word you could use to describe that. And the problem I'm going to use to get us involved with solving and writing uh, proportional problems is kind of a fairness problem. Your brother helped Dad last weekend. He worked four hours, and Dad paid him $12. Your dad said you could help him this weekend, and he said that he'd be fair and pay you an amount proportional to what your brother earned. You worked five hours. How much should your dad pay you to be fair? First, we'll see you CC the problem. Your brother worked four hours and he was paid twelve dollars. You worked five hours and we're going to try to find out how much you should be paid to make it fair or proportional. First, let's create a ratio or a fraction that shows the what your brother uh, worked and was paid. Your brother was paid twelve dollars and he worked four hours. I put the dollars over the hours and you remember we've got to be consistent. We've got to always keep the same units on the top and the bottom. So now let's write a proportion or a, a, a fraction to describe your situation. You're trying to figure out how much you should be paid P and you worked five hours. Now we've got the hours on the bottom and the dollars on the top. So we've got it consistently set up. And we want to make this equal. We want to make it proportional. You remember proportion is two fractions that are or ratios that are even or equal. So we can put an equal sign in there and we set up the proportion. Twelve dollars per four hours is equal to how many dollars per five hours? We can solve this problem a couple of ways. Let's try the cross product method first. You remember the cross product method. I set up uh, the, the fractions and then I multiply the numerator from the left fraction by the denominator on the right fraction and then I set that equal to the numerator on the right fraction times the denominator of the left fraction. Well our fractions are $12 per 4 hours equals how many dollars per five hours and if I'm going to do a cross product I multiply the twelve times the five and I set that equal to the p times the four. Twelve times five equals four times p. Twelve times five is sixty and that still equals four times p. But now I've got an algebra problem. I want to solve for p which means I've got to get rid of that four times. To get rid of a multiply by 4, I divide by 4. And if I'm going to divide the right side by 4, I need to divide the left side of the equation by 4. 60 divided by 4 equals 15. The two 4's cancel each other out on the right and leave just P. So P, the amount of money your dad should pay you, equals $15. We could also solve this proportion problem with algebra. And here's how we do it. I've got the proportion $12 for 4 hours equals how many dollars for 5 hours or P per 5 hours. Well, I've got an algebra expression here and I want to solve for P so I've got to get rid of that 5 hours or divided by 5 hours. To get rid of divided by 5 hours, I've got to multiply both sides of the equation 
by 5 hours. So the right becomes p times 5 hours divided by 5 hours and the left is 12 times 5 hours divided by 4 hours. We're not done yet. Let's move on over to the right and I've got down here I've got 5 hours over 4 hours. Well, just like you can sub you can cancel out numbers, you can cancel out units. I've got hours and hours, and I can cancel out those hours and leave just 12 times 5 divided by 4. And on the right side, I've got 5 hours over 5 hours. They both cancel each other out and just leave a P. So now I've got 12 times 5 over 4. 12 times 5 is 60. 60 divided by 4 equals 15, which equals P. Here's another way to, to solve this, this kind of proportion problem, and it's a cool trick as, as well. It's mental math. We've got the proportion. We know that $12 per 4 hours has to be equal to how many dollars per 5 hours. Well, you can do this with mental math you can look at the 12 over 4 and say well how many times bigger is 12 than 4 well I gotta multiply 4 times 3 to get 12 so 12 is 3 times bigger than 4 now if we're gonna be fair and we're gonna be proportional the same's gotta be true on the other side of the equation the 5 has to be uh, three times smaller or the P has to be three times larger than the 5. So my relationship on the left is that the, the denominator is increased three times to get the numerator. The same is going to be true on the right. The, de the denominator 5 will increase three times and that will be the, 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 the numerator. And sure enough 5 times 3 equals 15 and that's the same answer we got the last way we solved. Well, there's another way we could do this problem using mental math. If you remember the last time, we looked at the relationship between the uh, denominator and the numerator of the fraction on the left, and we found that, that, that 4 increased 3 times to get to 12, so 5 has to increase 3 times to arrive at the value for p if these are in fact proportional. But there's another way we could do this we could look at the relationship between the denominator and the two fractions. This is a little harder math. This is may, Maybe you couldn't do this in your head, but I want you to see that it, 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 it can be done this way. What's the relationship between 4 and 5? Well, 4 times what equals 5? 4 times 1.25 equals 5. So 4 grows 125% or it grows by 1.25 times to get to be 5. Well, if it's proportional, the same's got to be true about the two numerators. And the 12 will have to grow by 1.25 times to become p. And when I multiply 12 times 1.25, I get 15, which is the answer we've gotten every other way we solved it, and it's the right answer. Try this one. Hit your pause key, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, Aunt Rose's recipe for banana bread calls for two bananas, three cups of flour, one cup of, of milk, a cup of walnuts, a pinch of yeast. But you don't want to make one loaf or a loaf you want to make three loaves. So how are you going to figure that out? Well, first of all, I circled the numbers. I circled A because A means a single loaf of bread or one loaf of bread. I circled three cups of flour because it's really just loaves of bread and cups of flour that we need to consider. So I didn't circle one cup of milk or a cup of walnuts, but I did circle three loaves of breads. Now, I need to set up a proportion. How about this one? Three cups of flour is to one loaf of bread as an unknown number of cups of flour is to three loaves of bread. 
3 over 1 is proportional to or equal to an unknown number over 3. Well, we can use cross products to figure that one out. We'll multiply 3 cups times 3 loaves, and we'll get 9. And then we multiply 1 loaf times the unknown x, and we get 1x. So, x equals 9. We'll need 9 cups of flour in order to make 3 loaves of this delicious banana bread. Joe's Trucking sent one truck west to a job. That truck drove 150 miles and used 12 gallons of gas. Joe sent another truck east to a job that was 450 miles away. If both trucks get the same miles per gallon, how many gallons did the second truck burn? We're going to call the number of gallons burned B. So the first thing we have to do is set up uh, the, the fractions or the ratios. Well, the first truck drove 150 miles on 12 gallons of gas. So let's set it up that way, 150 miles per 12 gallons of gas. The second truck drove 450 miles, and we don't know the number of gallons of gas he burns, but we're going to call it B. So the right side of the equation is 450 miles over B gallons. Now, we could solve this with mental math. And it's kind of fun and kind of easy. And you could do this in your head. And it looks like a complicated problem. But I know you can learn to do this in your head. i got to figure out what the relationship is of the two numerators. 150 grows by how much to get to 450? Well, 150 grows by three times to get to 450. Three times 150 equals 450. So, if the numerators from the left to the right grow by three times, then the denominators from the left to the right also have to grow by three times if it's proportional. 12 gallons times 3 equals 36 gallons. So we would predict that the second truck burned 36 gallons driving the 450 miles. Well, I hope you learned something about writing and solving proportions. And now you ought to try a worksheet to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info, download and print the Writing and Solving Proportions Worksheet. That's under the Worksheet tab, 7th grade, 1st quarter. Try that worksheet and see if you understand the concepts. You could also try the interactive test at the www.mastermath.info site to test your skills. Come back and see us again soon.